Hey there, everyone. Let's have a look at Demiant's Shield from Legion Games. This is a Vance von Boris game. And, um, you know, it's interesting. It's a, a tough situation for the Germans, tough situation for the Soviets as the game is structured. Uh, it runs in that scale of uh, pretty much everything is either a battalion or a regiment. Uh, or if you're a Soviet force, then brigades. So it's nice to see regiments and brigades of Soviet forces versus everything being a division, right? So that means you've got a few more counters to manage on the board, as you can see. And you've got uh, you know, a little bit more diversity in the formation makeup and things like that. So that adds an interesting element to the game because usually you've got you know one monolithic division trying to beat its head against a slightly uh, you know an underpowered brigade or uh, regiment or whatever the case may be for the German player so it's a defensive situation for the Germans <clears throat> um, we're set uh, what is it 44 right or 43 I think I forget right now oh or was it 41 no that's right 42 my gosh so I guess the tail end of uh, 41 and the beginning of 42, the battle really starts in 1942 in January and runs through uh, to the end of May. So it's quite a long game. Uh, each turn is about three or five days, I want to say, five days. And look at the turn track here. Yeah, five days. So it's the early days of the uh, Soviets getting their their act together, but it's not that great in act. And I think this game captures this fairly well because the stacking limitations, these uh, white dots or black dots, depending on the unit. Um, no, I forgot where that was. Poop, that wasn't here. Don't matter. Um, maybe it was back here. Uh, the white dots are stacking uh, points. Each force can have seven, each hex can have seven stacking points in it. And so that's going to limit the ability of the, the Soviets to mass their forces. But it gives the Germans enough stacking points to build up some decent stacks. This game uses a lot of common mechanics that we would be comfortable with. It has the stop on the entry of a zone of control. It has the you must do the soak off attack uh, routine. It has victory points uh, clearly located on the map, so you keep track of those. You also keep, keep track of losses. You may note that there's different uh, colored boxes, red, yellow, and there's some green down here as well. Each turn we're gonna roll for supply for the Soviets to see how well they are or are not supplied. And uh, if you roll red for the, on the red guys, then their movement is halved and their attack factors are halved and they get no attack supply. And uh, and actually, in fact, that reminds me, I, I want to cross my fingers about attack supply and go look something up later on and I'll, I'll make a note on the video at some point. But I believe that uh, there is really no such thing as attack supply, but I'm not sure. That, that sounds like a uh, Eastern Front system game, the Barbarossa stuff, but they use the word attack supply, and I've not seen a penalty for attacking unsupplied other than the fact that you are attacking at half, which is not the same thing. Uh, it abstracts air out in an interesting way. You'll get these air factors and after they've flown uh, or fought in a combat, you'll see here on the combat results table, if there's an asterisk against the uh, either the attacker or the defender, then that unit that flew or a unit that flew is deemed to be have flown and is unavailable for the rest of the turn. Speaking of turns, they run in a double, a double turn style. So Soviets will move, Germans will move, then Soviets will move and Germans will move and you'll have two sets of combat uh, for each of those uh, dual phases. So you actually do get a lot of activity in a given turn. Turns play very quickly. The thing I'm struggling with is uh, mounting a successful assault. 
uh, for the Soviets. I think I maybe I started out too early or did not uh, prep well enough and maneuver well enough. But over here, this red portion of the army group has really taken a beating. The 182nd, 188th, uh, 201st Infantry Divisions have uh, just taken beat down. Trying to take us Diarusa here, uh, really proving very difficult to get anything beyond a one to one or a three to two attack. And the die rolls are pretty unforgiving. At uh, one to one, you will take a loss on all but a one. <clears throat> on a uh, three to two, you will take a loss on all but a one or a two as the attacker. And you may inflict losses. Um, as the uh, as the attacker on three to two, uh, in only two instances, no, one instance on three to two. The the rest are retreats. So there's a lot of retreats going on. It's very similar, in fact, to Red Typhoon in that, that there's kind of a shoving match going on here. We're trying to force folks back. Here, there's a in in the center here. There's a weight of German small divisions and a lot of. Uh, weaker uh, Soviet divisions that really can't mount an effective attack without exposing you know, their rear and all sort of fun stuff. Down here, same sort of story, but I did find an opportunity to get a little flanking action going on here. Getting across these frozen marshes will, uh, or swamps will particularly uh, be a challenge for the Germans in a couple of turns. But these guys don't you know, down here don't get any reinforcements until... Turn something that looks like turn four. Wow, actually, there's maybe that much that comes turn four. It's only three units, so and there's a few more later on. So the Germans are probably overweight down here and need to reorient, reorient even more forces to the north because you know this big swag of uh, reinforcements here, and there's the guard unit somewhere. The guard is here. They've made a little breakthrough over there. All these came on in the last two turns, and it's proved to be a challenge for the uh, for the the German player. But they're holding the line pretty well, and and herein lies some of my problem. I, I'm I'm just I think it's a fine game, but I'm having a getting a little frustrated with you know doing one to one attacks all the time and, and three to two attacks and roll the die and someone retreats and. Uh, there's, you know, we're not seeing any sort of breakthrough style combat happen, which I don't expect Panzer Pusher style uh, breakthroughs to occur. But if you start looking at some of the movement rates for these units, you know, these infantry units are, obviously have trucks versus uh, these smaller units, these battalions. Uh, a lot of the German units have uh, five, six, and even seven movement points for these mech probably what might be mechanized or partially mechanized infantry units. So while you don't have the ability with panzers that have eight movement factors to and, and, and four extra for exploit, while you don't have that ability to you know, lunge from one side of the field to the other, you do have the ability to dash about and, and plug holes. And uh, I think if, uh, if I can stave off this assault here, this little section here, if I can slow that down enough, then I should be able to peel off some units uh, and have a little, a little uh, fire brigade of uh, high-speed high six and seven rated units that can jump in and plug holes. The Germans have been very effective counterattacking as the Soviets tried to get around the backside of this uh, city here because it's a pretty important VP location. Um, and they actually isolated the unit, then attacked it, and so got some nice benefits and had the first five to one attack of the game, actually. Soviets have not gotten above, uh, except for some isolated attacks, one and two attacks here, maybe. But <coughs> everything's been uh, three to two, one to one, two to one, the occasional five to two attack. Very difficult to uh, get some decent odds here. So it it's easy to play. It's relatively uh, consistent concepts with other games that you've played before in terms of replacement points and supply and uh, you know nice reinforcement charts and. Uh, the air war is very abstract. There's no air-to-air -air stuff going on, so you have to worry too much about that. 
combat is uh, bulk simple with uh, a combat support provided by air and artillery and manifesting itself as shifts on the uh, attack odds which run from one to three to eight to one let me show you that table actually if you want to have a look at it so you can get a feel for what's going on there um, the gray out, grayed out boxes are where you've got to retreat two hexes so it I, I think it plays okay the, the thing is I'm I'm kind of not I'm not super engaged right here. I've only played uh, three turns here, and you know we started. Well, the lines moved in here a little bit, and in here a little bit, and everything else other than this little lunge down here has stayed pretty static. And I'm wondering if I'm favoring one side or the other. I'm, tr you know, I'm obviously trying not to. I really would like to see a, an effective Soviet offense here, but I'm, I'm trying to get these other divisions into uh, into the battle so we'll see what happens we'll, we'll keep plugging away at it but i can't see myself doing 20 turns or 18 turns of this um, which you know begs the question why bother so does that mean it's good or bad game doesn't mean anything just means that uh, in my current state of mind i'm i'm not particularly uh fussed whether i keep playing this or not i might have some other more fascinating slash uh, familiar slash larger games that I'd like to sink my teeth into that might be a little more interesting for us. Perhaps I'm suffering from East Front fatigue given the significant number of hours we've put into East Front titles over the last uh, month or two. But all that said, great production quality actually i really I, at first i thought these counters were kind of thin but i was wrong I, I don't believe they are they are very nice size these are all oversized hexes and 5 8 sized counters pretty clear rule book I, I would have preferred this to be in color you know charge me a dollar extra and let's get this sucker in color uh the formatting it's good it's not awesome but it's good and um Charts are great. Uh, would have, once again, would have been, I think there's only one copy of these. I might be wrong, there might be two. Would have been nice to have two copies of these as well. It is a, it is a two player game. And there you, there's my capsule comments on this game. I, I will, you know, if there's something worthwhile writing up, I'm, this is not really something that's gonna evoke a very strong narrative story for me or anything that I could really say, hey, I'm gonna go write to you know, 2,000 words about it right now. So we'll leave it at that and uh, wrap this up in the next two, three, four turns or whatever the case may be. And I'll let you know if my opinion changes as we progress. One of the game, this game will probably end up being played opposed with Pete. He's a, he's a fan of uh, non-Panzer oriented uh, battles. So we'll try and get stuck into that with him at some point. Otherwise, Look forward to talking to all of you again soon. Ciao.